Hi everyone, I'm Mary, and if you look at Overly Sarcastic Productions, next part of Journey to the West is episode 11, Fanning the Fames. Now, I don't know where we're getting to because I still have no idea what happens in Journey to the West, other than all of the coverage in Sayuki and the bastardization Dragon Ball does, which I have no idea how accurate that is, other than Goku is named in there, that's basically the extent of my knowledge, which I discount completely. That said, Red's covering it, it's going to be good, animation, going to be good, it's Overly Sarcastic Productions, it's going to take a wild guess here and say, it's going to be good. So you guys know the deal. Link below video. Hit it up. Let's get started. Last time on Journey to the West, I even heard a that devastating voice. duel of doppelgangers drew yep. dangerous delinquency as a duo of deadly uh, monkeys yeah, battled their Almost got it. She almost got all the Ds. Granted, I can't say I do better on the top of my head, so well played. Way through the far corners of the world, shaking the very foundations <laughs> of the heavens with their Oh yeah, because it was the monkey fight before strength. Buddha decided to end Unable it. to distinguish the deceit in the dreadful duo, yes, we're back in it. Tripataka was forced to rely on the aid of the Buddha <laughs> himself, who concluded that the counterfeit circopithecoid, bit of a stretch, was none other than the near-omniscient six-eared macaque, one of the four heavenly apes that categorize our clever yep. Sun Wukong. And then got yeeted. Come on, that's probably the best part of the episode, just watching them be absolutely destroyed by just yeeting them out of the way. Concept that definitely didn't come out of absolutely nowhere. After yeah. defeating his dark reflection, Sun Wukong rejoined his companions and they once Wasn't his again dark continued reflection, though? their journey I mean, to the West. It... So are... I mean, I get where they're going with, and it's an old enough story where dark reflection isn't nearly as much of a trope, but... Is it really, though? I mean, on the one hand, yeah, I get it. This is like, oh my god, they are entirely exactly what I am but they can tell what I'm about to do, which is impressive because I don't even know what I'm about to do. That's kind of the joke with him. I get it. Probably not in the actual canon, but it has red portrays him. He does kind of give off that crazed manic energy every now and again, which apparently the book gets counteracted by him also being massively whiny. That just sounds weird to me considering all media based on Song Wukong don't come off that way. Maybe that's just me. Our heroes are trekking westward, and the seasons have turned onward. Oh, carrying our they actually have season progression. The cool autumn months, or at least it's supposed to. Nothing beats a crunchy leaf. I think they're crunchy because they've been fried, and he's just eating the leaf. <laughs> but Tripitaka notes that the climate seems unusually warm for that time of year, and Little it's getting burning. downright toasty to a rather alarming degree. But I wouldn't know anything about what that feels like. They roll up on a local. I know that's a reference to something, but I have no idea what. And it's bugging me because it feels like it should be an obvious shout out that, oh yeah, I've watched more than five minutes of this. I know exactly what this is. I have no idea what it is. It's actually bugging me. Village to ask about the bizarre and confusing weather and Waymo, our hot man's extra spicy stir fry. Flames, a massive permanent fixture of the environment oh. that's constantly wreathed in unimaginably hot Play fire, mountain. cooking the land around it for a full 60 miles in every direction. Sun Wukong commits the faux pas of pondering a logical world building question in a fantastic Wait, he actually asked about why that would happen? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe ideal growing conditions don't usually include constantly on fire. Wow, sir, are you sure you're not a farmer yourself? At this point, I'm kind of surprised if he doesn't have those random skills. Fantastical allegory for the journey to enlightenment and asks the locals how they can possibly grow the crops needed to eat if they're living in a permanent summer. And they tell him that Magic. once every 10 years, they bring a sacrifice of livestock and fine foods to the immortal Iron Fan who lives in the faraway Jade Cloud Mountain. And the immortal Iron Fan uses a magical palm leaf fan to temporarily quench the flames and bring rain, allowing the locals a semblance of normal farming conditions for at least for how long i mean they're going once every 10 years it can't be that good just a little while this arrangement is working okay she didn't actually complete that i thought like maybe for a year five years and then just store up no no it's just like eh, we're always on fire she's making a joke about california isn't she it feels like she's making a california joke about her not knowing what that feels like hmm Worked out pretty well for them so far, but unfortunately, the Mountain of Flames is, no surprise, set squarely on the road to the west, and it's Do much too hot around? for most of our heroes to survive the journey. So I mean, other than Zone Wukong, and, and the dragon. Off to the Jade Cloud Mountain to see about getting that palm leaf fan and putting the fire out. And once good. again, Song when Wukong does it all. Mountain, he's informed by a local woodcutter that they have. I think I know who you mean. We can't have that many iron fans. You'd be surprised. I know three Tianzuns, Tanshuns, and 28 mansions. I feel like I've seen this word before, and honestly, I'm pulling a blank on it. I haven't heard of any immortal Iron Fan. They just have a princess Iron Fan, but they mostly call her Rakshasi due to her much more... Rakshasi? 
it's probably just a similar name to Rakshasa, and I have no idea where that's from, but I'm pretty sure that's more Middle Eastern what I'm thinking. It's probably a coincidence. Although I do know there is cross-cultural pollination of ideas, so it's entirely possible maybe the name is from there. Probably not, though. That would be weird. If you're after a benevolent immortal, she's not the one. Her husband's bad news. Ooh. Bad news. Goku, fight. Yeah, we know where this is going. For relevant status He's poke as the wife of the powerful and terrifying Bull Demon King. Uh-oh, that's a name Sun Wukong is Oh, it's one of his old buddies. With. After all, the Bull Demon King's son, Red Boy, nearly ate Tripitaka a few episodes ago. Yeah. And getting up in the Kuan Yin internship timeout zone has already pissed <laughs> off him. one of his relatives bad enough to attack the Monkey King on sight. But yeah. hey, maybe his parents... So, are you guys like friends or she might try to kill me on sight, but that's never bothered me before. With as many types of his immor immortality he has, and my ability to say it apparently, yeah, that makes sense. Killing him is kind of like saying, hey, friend slap. <sighs> it's an asshole move. Be kind of ignored after a while. That's aren't holding a grudge, right? Anything is possible. So Sun Wukong reinvigorates yeah, his sense of sunny optimism and scoots off to the mountain cave to announce his presence. <laughs> Wait, what did they say? His big what? Hello, Iron Fan. It's your big brother-in-law, Sun Wukong. Oh, because demons, yeah. Presence. Unfortunately, what? when Princess Iron Fan <laughs> learns her mountain me. has been graced by the legendary Sun Wukong, she flies into an immediate rage. On yeah. And stalks out to face him. Sun and oh, okay. One? Damn, she's actually wearing armor. It's weird how many of them actually haven't done that. Sun, I love what you've done with your swords. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> She even has the words dripping with a menace. <laughs> Son initially plays dumb about the whole red boy. My baby boy is imprisoned. I think your baby boy would agree that true prison is samsara. Uh, okay, yeah, he put it in there, and considering who he's with, he probably has to agree. Uh, but does point out that any hijinks he may or may not have done would have been heavily justified by how her baby boy tried to eat his master. And yeah. besides, Red Boy's Kuan Yin summer job has bumped him up in the world by granting him the true immortality of Buddhism. This incidental oh. reminder that she can't visit him anymore tips... He's all I have left. Oh. Well, that's depressing. I thought the Bull King was still alive. Princess Iron Fan over the edge into true fury and she attacks. Sun lets her get it out of her system by tanking a few hits and when she realizes her sword... He actually just let it happen. This wasn't just her art. He actually just let it happen. Do you want to talk about it? You know, this is kind of funny because normally whenever someone's going to fight, he takes a few hits, he gets beat down, he has to come back. This is him just letting them wail on him. I didn't know he was able to do that because normally he will go all out against people who are way weaker than him to show a point. This is probably the first time I've seen where he's just like, oh yeah, that could hurt someone that's not me. Huh aren't making a dent they escalate into a furious battle that lasts all the way to sunset and when princess iron fan finds okay never mind there's the battle i'm just saying shut up you need a life outside your household shut up it's a basic self-care shut up <laughs> i wonder if this is the origin of the idea that you become friends by fighting it feels like that's where it's going finally realizes she can't beat him she pulls out the legendary fan itself oh. but instead of handing it over she swings it blowing some and he blows her. over the horizon and leaving her free to return to her cave and go to bed sun tumbles through the air all night unable I mean, to get close enough to the ground fly to back. land until he manages to snag hold of a mountain, mountain. Peak. once he rallies a little he realizes he actually wait a minute i never forget an aggressively generic lump of rock especially this easy to draw Oh, this is where he was trapped, wasn't he? Actually recognizes the mountain. It's where he fought a completely unrelated wind oh. demon back in episode three with the help of the Bodhisattva Ling Ji. Seeing it Oh, actually I completely thought it was something different. Huh. As he's in the neighborhood, he drops by Ling Ji's temple and explains the situation. And Ling Ji is very impressed that Sun managed to stop his <laughs> I'm sorry, I love this one. How did you piss her off? I was there! Okay, it makes sense. <laughs> flight after a mere 50,000 miles. The winds of the Divine Fan are supposed to blow the victim a full 84,000 miles. Damn. Subjected to the sweet release of... 84,000? How far is the Earth? That's a significant portion of the crust. So, yeah. By all rights, you should be halfway to the moon by now. Well, if I got too cozy with change... Yeah. Why is there an apostrophe? Oh, Pigsy never would have forgive me gravity once more. Fortunately for Sun Wukong, Ling Ji can actually help him out. Since way back really? in the day, the Buddha gave him two treasures for dealing with wind-related threats. Oh. One is the flying dragon staff they already used to defeat the yellow wind yep. demon, but the other is a small pill of wind-arresting elixir that hasn't been used yet. They I'm sorry, the it's what? Beat the yellow wind demon, but the other is a small pill of wind-arresting Oh, wind-arresting. 
I'm not going to say what I thought she said, and I'm going to leave it at that for my own sanity. Elixir that hasn't been used yet. They sew it into Sun's collar for future use and send oh. them on his way. Sun zips. Wait, did he say why should I eat it? So, when should I eat it? It's magic. You don't have to. But I want to, because he's eaten every other bauble that comes this way. And it's actually worked out pretty well for him. The fact that he's not dead is in his own right kind of weird. Sun zips back to the cave and hammers on the door, which severely un Thanks for the demonstration. You've got to be kidding. Can I get a gift wrapped? And she's just there going, I hate this. Common reaction. Iron fan who gears up to fight him again. This time, however, the wind arresting elixir makes Sun completely immune oh. to the fan's wind. And that was the only thing she did that could actually touch him. So much that she bolts back into the cave and seals the door. Having oh, again, we're getting the smarter enemies. Granted, these are still the enemies he's not trying to kill. It seems. Nope. Wait, come back. You totally had me. Having tried and failed the direct. Why do all these fights have so much not fighting in them? There's a joke in there about it being a really good comparison to Dragon Ball Z. That was inspiration. But that would be too on the nose and probably painful to admit. And I'm not going to make that comparison because I have self-dignity that I will pretend it actually exists. Direct combat approach twice now. Sun decides to try the sneaky route and turns into a mole cricket, slides under the door, what? sees Princess Iron Fan... Oh, that's actually an animal? Tea ...and gets a very clever idea. I'm sorry, what the hell does this thing look like? Oh, mole, mole cricket. It kind of looks like the guy from Atlantis because of just the nose shape and the general face shape. It's where I'm going with this one. I have no idea if it's accurate or not, but it's what it looks like. Small size plus opaque drink plus casually indestructible. Tactical advantage. Oh no, he's gonna, oh, is he gonna get eaten? Oh no, there's boar in this one. So Sun dives into the tea is promptly swallowed and proceeds to use his highly tactically advantageous position to hello i have a hilarious digestive pun about wind powers just kidding it's sun wukong is this not i don't think this yeah no i'm actually remembering previous episode this is the second time he's bursted out of someone's stomach Alien impressions all around. Position to wail on Princess Iron Fan from the inside. She begs for mercy and offers him the fan, and he kindly accepts her term. Yep. Ah. This is what happens when you swallow the monkey. It's exactly what happened, and nothing else. Nothing else. If I give you the fan, will you please go away? Sister, for those terms, I'll even leave the way I came in. Oh, oh, yeah, that would be a thing. Zipping back out of her mouth, snagging the palm leaf fan, and... Tell the bull demon king I said, you're not mad, right? Which is weird, but didn't she say he's all I have left, implying the bull demon king isn't around? Heading back to the gang. Mission accomplished, or so it seems. But as they proceed to the mountain of flames and Sun readies the fan, he finds that every swing only seems to make the fires burn hotter. When three swings of the fan make the heat a thousand times more unbearable, the gang have no choice but to retreat. He's actually on fire. Did I have the silly thing in reverse? On the plus side, you still haven't been kidnapped. Thanks, Pixie. I mean, all joking aside, Pixie has a point. This is probably one of the rare episodes where that doesn't happen. You know, it's not over yet. It's not even halfway there. It probably is going to happen eventually. And rethink their approach. As they're stewing in their various grievances, the gang is approached by an old man who explains that he's the local deity of the mountain. Oh, they just flat out came to... Why is there a fish cooking buns on its head? I, I get it, it's hot, but... I'm hoping Red explains this because there are questions I have and all of them are, what the fuck am I looking at? Yeah. Excuse me, are we interrupting? My associate brought snacks. Ooh, it's already divine intervention o'clock. Yeah. Mountain of flames. He saw them having difficulties and he to help them out. But as soon as he spots the fan, he realizes the problem. See, you can tell from the inscription, made in China. I should have known. Problem. The fan <laughs> Accurate, is though. actually a fake. If Sun wants the real one that'll let him put out the fire for good, he'll probably have to seek out the Bull Demon King himself to figure out how he and Princess Iron Fan have hidden it. Sun asked, Oh, so she had the fake the entire time. And she didn't even trick him, he just demanded the fan she had. Asks if the Bull Demon King Man, Bully Boy really messed this place up, huh? Couldn't have terrorized it better myself. Uh, don't sell yourself short. <laughs> yeah, because he did kind of do a lot. He's responsible for the fire on the Mountain of Flames, and the spirit says that Sun has to promise not to get mad, but the Bull Demon King didn't set the fire. What? Sun Wukong did. Oh. He quickly explains that way back when Sun Wukong wreaked havoc in heaven and got stuck in Lao Tzu's brazier for his troubles, when Sun broke out and overturned the brazier, he dislodged a few flaming heavenly bricks that oh. fell to earth and lodged in this mountain. The mountain 
Wait, what did it say down there? Maybe I... Maybe I just don't photograph well. <laughs> mountain. The mountain spirit says he was... Wow, I don't remember seeing you at all. Well, you were hiding in the ambiguous background void. I was very intelligent. Or negligent, that's the word. Actually, the brazier's attendant, but after Sun's breakout, he was punished and demoted for his negligence and has been stuck taking care of this burning mountain ever since. Yeah. But all news aside, the mountain spirit has plenty of fresh and piping hot goss to dig. He has a hand puppet. She drew them with hand puppets. Allow me to explain with hand puppets. Yes, please. I know this is a reference to a 90s movie. Or maybe even 80s. But I cannot place this one. It is actually bugging me. Something about explaining with puppets. Unless it was Scary Movie 5. With like Charlie Sheen. That's the only other thing I can think of. I don't want to admit that that's what it's going with. Dish on the Bull Demon King. Mm. Apparently, he and Princess Iron Fan are actually separated because oh. the Bull Demon King is hooked up with Princess Jade Countenance, the daughter of what? a 10,000-year-old fox spirit who died and left behind a massive hoard of treasure, which Princess Jade Countenance offered in full to the Bull Demon King. Last will and testament, like a literal mountain of gold. So he's literally the gold digger in this. And that's also why she said it's the only thing I have left because he literally left her for a mountain of gold. King as her dowry if he'd come protect her with his big strong arms. So the bull demon king totally ditched Princess I. He's having fun with us. And I like, yeah, Red did a good job on this. And she's even a little shaking. What a crushing and profound betrayal. Not from where I'm standing, babe. Well, that's one reason to try and kill me. Yeah. Iron Fan and shacked up with Princess Jade Countenance in the cloud touching cave of the Horde Thunder Mountain. But the Bull Demon King's disastrous love life aside, if Sun Wukong can get the Bull Demon King to. Son, you have to get that fan and allow me to correct my failure. Guys, guys. I would do it just to beat him up. Oh, I just noticed what's going on down there. Pigsy reaching for the bun while the horse is trying to get it. <laughs> uh, I'm more surprised the little fish guy could actually hold off the horse. When it wants something, it usually. Fails actually not all the times I've shown that. Okay, that never mind. That makes perfect sense. To tell him how to get the fan, Sun can do three good deeds for the price of one. Let Tripitaka continue his journey to the west, extinguish the flaming mountain that is 100% his fault, and get the spirit of the mountain unbanished from heaven. Sun yeah. wastes no time and jets off to Horde Ooh. Thunder Mountain. Oh, okay. Yeah, Red definitely took notes from the last time. The various cloud effects look way more. Disney's Hercules, actually, now that I think about. I really like it, though. Overall, it really fits in with her style. Heavily shading, but also multiple different tones in there. I just really like this image. It has all the basic details and nothing is overdone. It's very simple, but really pretty. Where he finds a beautiful young woman who he asks if she can direct him to the bull demon. Excuse me, miss. I'm looking for the bull demon king. Official wife business. Considering who that probably is. Yeah. When he decides he needs a cover story and claims that Princess Iron Fan sent him, the young woman flies into a rage and some realize... What have you... What does his wife have to do with anything? Ah, it's you. You know what? He's about to earn points. Doesn't really matter how it goes. I think he's earning points on this one. Also, she acknowledges he's still married to her. Huh. Realizes immediately that he miscalculated, and this young woman must be the other woman, aka Princess Jade Countenance. Sun gets remarkably pissed at her home wrecking hijinks, really? which scares her so much that she bolts, vanishing into the cave and flinging herself at the bull demon king so she can beg him to protect her from the. T I mean, getting help protecting you from Sun Wukong? Not usually the best because running was the better option. On the other hand, good instincts to run. Angry Wukong is usually a good thing to run from. Terrifying monk his ex-wife sent to their door. Your wife sent an awful monk here to terrorize me. Oh, what? You know, won't you please kill him for me? Oh, no, she doesn't know who he is. She just ran from a random monk. Oh, no. This makes it even better. <laughs> This convoluted string of apparently disconnected concepts confuses the King, 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 who heads out tentatively expecting a fight and is not expecting to find his former blood brother, Sun Wukong, who is a picture of politeness as he explains his recent exploit. BDK, my man? I have no idea what BDK means. No, seriously, I, if someone could let me know, I'm actually going to bug myself about this one. It's kind of bugging me. About damn... Knight? I, I don't know. I, I literally don't know. It's, there's no translations for it down here. Oh, there, that would have been lucky if there was. ...and asks him for his help in acquiring the fan. The Bull Demon King is already pretty pissed right from the jump, but... Yeah. It's not like he's waving around a red flag or anything. 
Actually, what color does he usually wear? I, I don't remember. It's always black and white here. Here to ruin more of my family's lives? Believe it or not, this is not and has never been about you. It's about your wife. That actually sounds worse when put that way. But the audacity to ask him for a favor against his own wife is the last straw, and he attacks. He and the Monkey King clash <laughs> in a truly spectacular battle that is He's cut short it. when the Bull Demon King gets a dinner invitation he really can't turn down. So he calls it. Seriously? Well, that thought. Uh, and there's even a fish making a delivery on a scroll. I'm sorry, though. Did he actually? This is in the book. In Journey to the West. He got a dinner invitation mid-battle and stopped the battle to go to dinner. I don't know why out of everything so far, this is the part that hits me as weird. I mean, we're talking about anthropomorphic deities and or demons who have multiple forms of immortality. I really shouldn't be thinking that this is the weird part, but it kind of feels like the weird part to me. I know. I don't get it either time out and zips back to the cave to get ready. Sun is evidently too confused to stop him, but does yeah. decide to secretly follow him to the aforementioned dinner oh, party to see if that gives him any leads. The bull demon king disappears into a mountain containing a deep lagoon, so Sun turns into a crab and scuttles down after him. Where he oh, water deities. Oh, I guess he can breathe underwater. So what's Sun say? Disappears into a mountain containing a deep... Oh, I've been waiting for a chance to use this transformation. Oh, no underwater coral palace full of all kinds of aquatic animals oh that explains a the fish party for a Messenger, bunch of yeah. dragon spirits with the bull demon king as oh. the special guest of honor unfortunately for sun the old dragon oh, spirit yeah. has a sharp eye for interlopers and immediately noticed oh you strange crab what are you doing here still thinks it's a crab though this is the crab out of place but sun quickly concocts a cover story about how he's just i am but a humble non-suspicious crab you certainly seem non-suspicious i saw splash I, I combine the word splash. Spare you the lash. Why would you lash a crab? They have shells. The humble country crab who don't know nothing about their fancy palace ways. So he manages to escape the fate or of the crab flogging, anyway. but is still kicked out of the party, which is when he remembers he can shapeshift and decides to just steal the Bull Demon King's ride and pretend to be him. He flies back what? to Jade Cloud Mountain, perfectly disguised as- I could have done this from the start, but then I wouldn't have gotten to steal the canapes. Oh, it's a little treat to eat. Yeah, okay. The Bull Demon King, where he is, of oh, course, greeted with the high. Oh, you went back here. Ma'am, your husband is outside. <laughs> and she just spits the tea. Oh, it's honored no. by Princess Iron Fan, who very politely asks him what could have possessed. Welcome, my lord. To what do I owe this honor? Boy, I really don't deserve you, huh? Probably don't, or she's planning to stab you. Probably deserved that, in that case. And admittedly, he's not making it worse him to leave his hot new concubine and return to her humble abode. Sun is like, Uh, well, you see, I've heard tell that the devilishly handsome Sun Wukong is on the un for the palm leaf fan. Did Red do this one? I think that's Red's voice. Also, yeah, I, I don't know why. It sounds full crunk to me. It doesn't actually sound like crunk, but in my head, I'm going Emperor's New Groove crunk every second of the way. Tell me this doesn't go just a little bit that direction. You see, I've heard tell that the devilishly handsome Sung Wukong is on the un for the palm leaf fan. Oh my. I just want to make sure you're keeping the treasure safe. You never know when he might strike. Princess Iron Fan tells him that Sun Wukong has already struck. Your concern is too kind, my lord, but the fan is safe with me. What? No way! Oh my God. But not to worry, she fooled him with a fake and he'll never find the real one. Sun asks where she's keeping the real one, you know, for security reasons, but Princess Iron Fan has held off long enough. And okay, I just want to point this out right here just a little shake in the eyes the little wibbly fan oh my god and declares it's time to celebrate his long-awaited return by partying no i'm fine this is normal and cool and he's just screaming as she's probably the first person to actually beat him hard and flirting even harder leaving son deeply uncomfortable as he quickly processes the ramifications of doing his espionage in the form of this woman's husband he finally yeah. gets her back on track on the where exactly is the fan question and she red is having fun with these faces and the little purple hearts oh my God. darling i really am worried about the fan if you could just show me where it is and that i just abandon you like your actual husband did responds by spitting out a really tiny one. Sun really? stares at it in abject confusion for a minute before Princess Iron Fan explains that as he knows, obviously the fan is hidden in its travel size mode until he touches the specific thread on the handle and recites the spell that'll change it into its full-sized form just like so. Sun thanks her for her help, drops the illusion, suggests she dial back on Oh. 
Oh, I want to go back. Just that face right there. Just the Full sheer contentment followed by. Like so. Son, thanks, for thanks. I made it. Just, just wait for, for help. It. Drops the... the little that that right there. I love this this part right here. Just her leaning in, and then just from the background, you see her pulling back the shadow lines, showing that she's just completely freaked out. Going, oh shit! <laughs> and him still looking absolutely freaked out. I still think this is her victory on this one. Drops the illusion. Suggests she dial back on the drinking. Also, I don't care how immortal you are. You gotta be more careful with your liver. Oh my god a little bit and then bolts leaving princess iron fan once again absolutely oh, win for Son, meanwhile busts out the spell she told him and makes the fan big and oh, then quickly no. realizes he never learned how to make it small again so he just slings it over his shoulder yeah. and slowly starts heading you're not mad i stole you right of course not mr gray sage ah uh, you're the best no you are mr great sage oh my god i hope she does this just because this amuses me back to the gang <laughs> meanwhile back at the dragon party the bull demon king realizes oh yeah because he stole the ride stole his ride recalls the suspicious country crab and puts two and two together to make sun wukong he heads straight oh my god i just love this not just because of the freaking crab rave but because they got wukong i'm assuming that says wukong behind him in chinese characters and he's even doing the yeah face <laughs> he heads straight for palm leaf cave and Darling, the fan! I should have known. You never come back for me, just for your treasures. Oh god, she's absolutely drunk. <laughs> oh. And the best part is... He's doing the exact same thing Wukong did, so... Yeah! No, he lives down to the Emperor. Oh, Wukong accidentally did a, probably a better job impersonating him, in her opinion, than he does impersonating himself. And finds Princess Iron Fan in completely furious disarray and borrows her swords to go kick Sun Wukong's ass a little yeah. bit. However, when he sees Sun logging the fan, he realizes he can't risk a direct confrontation for fear. Smart man. Very cunning, son, but I can match your wit at every turn. Bet you wouldn't fuss if I did a couple murders. They probably had it coming, Mr. Great Sage. She did the bit again! I'm sorry, I don't know why that him talking to the fan is the part I'm enjoying the most. But it is that and the faces she's giving the princess because it just is hilarious to me. But just this, it's cute. And I love him talking, just getting a little fun friend who's in his head, which just agrees with everything and not judging him for, you know, murdering a bunch of people. It's just a little thing friends do. Fear of getting blown over the horizon for 84,000 miles <laughs> and instead decides to take a page out of the Monkey King's book and... Oh, he can transform? You have grown weak, brother. You could never anticipate treachery. You know, considering you're the one who had to quit for the dinner date, and then he kind of impersonated you pretty well and snuck right past you without noticing it, and, you know, he stole your ride and stole your fan and technically almost stole your woman, who you abandoned, so... Uh, I don't think the treachery is your best feature here. ...and turns himself into Pigsy, so he meanders up to... Honestly, this isn't anticipating treachery. This is just expecting Pigsy to be Pigsy. In fact, he literally chose the worst one. If it was Sandy, though, that actually would be kind of terrifying. Also, was there anything else here? From one of your closest friends. I think the biggest problem with this is when Sun kills him, he's going to be disappointed it wasn't Pigsy. So he meanders up to Sun Wukong and is like, Oh, hey, buddy, you were taking so long. Tripitaka got worried that the devilishly oh, handsome lady Tripitaka. killer, the bull demon king, might have been giving you a hard time. Sun naturally regales him with, and of course she has it that they're doing the exact same thing about the devilishly handsome, showing that they are best bros because they act the same way. It was so easy. He didn't even fight me for it. Uh-huh. Decide dinner mattered more than his wife's well-being, I guess. Uh-huh. Then again, I'm pretty sure he had more about a Starbucks coupon than his wife. Hey, that fan looks heavy. Wow. I'm just going to throw it out there. The most damaging thing here is that he's not wrong, and the guy immediately confirms it by going to the fan. The tales of his cunning victory, and when Pigsy <laughs> offers to carry that ponderously huge fan for him, Sun agrees, presumably realizing just a second too late how out of character it is for Pigsy to volunteer to do anything. Yeah. Pigsy reveals his true form and swings the fan at Sun, but the wind proof elixir is still protecting cool. him, so instead they just fight normally. Me oh yeah, because the wind doesn't affect him, he's just... I want to see that, the monkey. All the wind is fucking it up. Yeah, I probably haven't experienced enough profound spousal betrayal. Oh, I haven't experienced profound spousal betrayal. I, I forgot the word spousal. Granted, I usually don't put it in this phrase, so it doesn't really make sense to me that much. Oh, that is it! Yeah. To be fair, you walked into that one.
normally. Meanwhile, Tripitaka is really getting sick of the super oh, fire mountain and is actually worried about what could possibly be taking Sun Wukong so long. He's actually worried about Sun Wukong? Wow. How long have they been taking? What if something happened to him? What if he needs our help? What if he's been parting with hot ladies without me? You know, actually, he did do that so accurately. Long, so he sends the real Pigsy after him with the spirit of the mountain of flames to guide his way. Sure enough, yeah. they quickly hear sounds of commotion and Pigsy zips down to help out with the fight. For the record, I have had only good reasons to kick your family's asses. I mean, eh, sort of for the wife, but mm, her ass was pre-kicked by the husband. Monkey is pissed right out the gate, but quickly reigns Perfect it in and tells Pigsy he's not really mad at him, he's mad at the bull demon king. I haven't done anything to deserve that in two and a half episodes. I'm so sorry. The habit is really strong. <laughs> For pretending to be him. And Pigsy <laughs> is so furious at having his identity stolen that he attacks the Bull Demon King in a frenzy that actually knocks him onto the back foot. The Bull Demon Seriously? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not actually used to Pigsy being useful. I, I, I want to see that again. Identity stolen that he attacked the Bull Demon King for pretending to be him. And Pigsy is. I can't believe he nearly killed you while wearing my face. Not even close. Now I know how you felt with the macaque. You absolutely do not. So furious at having his identity stolen that he attacks the bull demon. I'll send you. I'll see you in court and or hell. Oh God. Yeah. My initial impression is this is probably a joke about court being hell, but considering heaven is a bureaucracy, is hell actually a court system? It would be on the nose. And also at this point, I can completely see that being a thing. Demon King in a frenzy that actually knocks him onto the back foot. The Bull Demon King yeah. tries to retreat, but his way is barred by the spirit. You think a god can stop me when Sung Wukong can't? You do realize Sung Wukong isn't going all out on anyone, right? He probably doesn't actually. Of the mountain of flames, leading an army of ghosts that I assume he borrowed from Damn. the Return of the King. And with the Bull Demon King cornered, he has no choice but to keep fighting. The battle eventually takes them back to Horde Thunder Mountain, where Princess Jade Countenance sends out all their guards to back up the Bull Demon King, which manages to overwhelm Monkey and Pigsy by sheer numbers, letting the Bull Demon King finally retreat. But that dear God, this actually turned into a full Return of the King fight on this one. Is that her sword, babe? I can explain. No, you really can't. But that doesn't slow things down for long. And he offered to carry it for you? I said I was sorry. I thought you knew me. Won't happen again. Yeah, to be fair, that is kind of on him. Pigsy would never do that. As after Sun gets Pigsy up to speed and gives a little <laughs> motivational speech. To I just realized what they're doing over here. They're playing, I think it's Backgammon. Maybe troops, go. The duo smash oh, down the cave doors and the battle begins again. Yeah, but this just do time, that? the Bull Demon King tries another bold strategy for oh, running away. He abandons away. his armor and weapons and transforms into a swan to escape in the confusion. So oh shit, he actually was trying to run away. And spots him with his special eyes and sends the others to clear out the cave while he engages. Gotta run, but I thank you. I think you could take her in a fight, right? I mean... Mm, he got pretty far with his wife, so... The Bull Demon King in a good old-fashioned shapeshifter showdown. Oh my Do god, it. I'm sorry. I just... <laughs> I saw the face. Red's faces. Just the bird going full dorp. Leaving so soon, and this thing just going, Ah, oh, I fucked up. The duo battled through an assortment <laughs> of forms, going from birds to beasts until... I was like, what? The Bull Demon King enters his true form. A oh. gigantic pure white bull that is fully two miles long. Damn. So he responds by turning himself into his own mega version, and the two engage in a literal kaiju battle, and it rules. This cataclysmic clash of colossi. Fight seriously. Bet you wish you'd kept thumbs now. Oh, yeah, because he's just able to go giant because it's him. Oddly enough, he has done that before, so it's not even like this out of nowhere, which a lot of the powers kind of feel that way. This one really isn't. I alerts every god in the region that some sh** is going down, and they all yeah. come in to help out. Ow! Ow! Stop! Stop! Ah! <laughs> the beatdown, which the quickly boys. overwhelms the Bull Demon King, and he reverts to travel size to jet back to Palm Leaf Cave. Sun pursues- Even the travel size was actually mentioned here, because the wife said the fan was travel sized, so now he's going travel sized. Sorry, this is actually something just on the composition of how they've scripted this out. Red did a good job bringing in the travel size joke twice now because the first time get you, it was part of the story and how it worked. The second time, whenever she's calling it travel size to keep it down, you get the joke, you get the reference, and it's also a callback to what the wife previously did. Just a good use to pull it together. 
who's with the other gods, soon joined by Pigsy and that ghost army who have successfully cleared out Horde Thunder Mountain of bad oh, guys. I guess they're just having they the background. Palm Leaf Cave, and Pigsy gets a turn at smashing the door down, while inside, the Bull Demon King gives Princess Iron Fan the Palm Leaf Fan for safekeeping. At he went back to her. The fan isn't worth this. It's not about the fan. It's about you not dying at this point. At this point, she's fully done with this and tells him to just yeah. give the Monkey King the fan so he'll leave them alone. But the bull. I'm really hoping that he gets the same treatment his son does and gets fully shaved. Because that is hilarious right now. Demon King is too hopped up on vengeance to listen. And it's about Sun Wukong paying for every indignity. I don't know. I still think you're on the downside with this one because... Yeah. Gears up with her swords again to fight in yet another kick-ass battle. And stole but her another sword. gets tired out again and turns to run. <laughs> this time, his escape is barred by four serious big names. Oh? The four heavenly kings, Buddhist devos that guard the cardinal directions, block oh. his escape at every turn, having Why? been deployed by the Buddha himself to make him calm the hell down. The bull oh, only to calm down. So they're not actually killing him? Stick him up. Oh, God, because he's holding a snake like a gun. <sighs> also, what did Go or not Goku? What did Wukong say when he ran? But inevitably, he gets. So help me! I am going to start piping. <laughs> A little surprised he hasn't yet. Return, having been deployed by the Buddha himself to make him calm the hell down. The Bull Demon King finds himself well and truly surrounded by Buddhist warriors and celestial generals. Fleeing into the sky doesn't help since he runs smack into Devaraja Lee and. Got a license for those things? I mean, he did technically steal them from his ex. Prince Nada, who've been sent to arrest him on order of the Jade Emperor. He responds by turning back into a kaiju and throwing hands with Devaraja Lee in yet another kick ass epic battle. Lee, my man, how's the kids? Focus, please. <laughs> oh my god. This is insane, and I love every second about it. And then there's just Pigsy. <laughs> Prince Nada reminds everyone of that one time he turned into a three faced, six armed kaiju of his own by oh. doing that again, hopping on the bull's back and immediately slicing off its head. Oh. Unfortunately, the Bull Demon King has more in common with the Monkey King than they gave him credit for. Huh. Thought he was bringing his A game. That wasn't. That's. Not his A game? <gasps> yeah, because they went all out for a long time about that because the loss of his head is a minor inconvenience at most and he promptly throws <laughs> it back. A process that repeats like 10 more times until- He just decapitated him 10 times and he's actually getting frustrated. Where are you hiding these things? My power is beyond your comprehension. Uh, oh, I just realized that's all the bull heads down there. Oh my God. And that's what he's looking at, all the various heads he's already decapitated. Nada clocks that this isn't working and tries a new tactic by hooking his flaming wheel over the bull's horns. Ow. A massive on fire hoop stuck to his head. Bet you wish you had a fan to put them out. Excuse me for a moment. In case of some Wukong break glass. <laughs> what? I'm sorry, actually, what? Because he's not actually the fault this time around. Well, no, no, no actually, it is completely his fault because he lit the mountain on fire and that's what started everything. Yeah, although, you know, the bull demon cheating on his wife and causing all those problems is his own fault. So not entirely Goku's fault, Wukong's fault this time. Ed does not make the bull demon king happy and he tries <laughs> to transform to escape, but is locked out of shape-shifting by a magic mirror. Devarajali oh, that's why the, just such yeah, he the bull demon king finally surrenders. Okay, wow, Nada looks so incredibly smug right now. <laughs> I swear, red smug faces are some of the absolute best parts. Darling, you were right. Louder. You were right about the fan. He just... And they tie him up and lead him back to the cave, where he asks Princess Iron Fan to surrender the palm leaf fan to Sun Wukong. Princess yep. Iron Fan emerges, uncharacteristically plainly dressed and ready to surrender without complaint. Having Damn, she must be really done with all this shit. Hello again, my lord. Allow me to apologize for my husband's conduct. It's cool. You still didn't break my record. Which record? Probably not the one about cheating on wise, because one, I don't think he's ever been married. Two, I don't think he's ever cheated on someone like that. Cheated in everything else, sure, but that's a new one. Plaint, having done some soul searching and concluding she's... Oh, the done with it face. <laughs> he's just like, oh my god, he's going full grabby kitty. Do you want to trade for your husband? No, thank you. <laughs> and he's just, I'm giving it to you, and now I have nothing to trade for him. You must keep him. Really not happy with where her life is at right now. She hands over the fan, and they all yeah. head over to Tripitaka, who is a little startled when the entire- Looks like they had fun, because it's the entire army, the generals, the princes, everyone from heaven, the god, the entire god army, or at least ghost army. Yeah. 
Yeah, and Sandy's just chill with the it. The army of heaven rolls up. <laughs> Sun swings the fan three times, summoning a storm and finally putting out the fire. The heavenly host leaves with the bull demon king in tow, and Princess Iron Fan asks Sun if maybe she can have her fan back now since she... Oh, she actually wants it back? If you're finished with the fan like to use it in pursuit of self-cultivation. <laughs> Sun is a little surprised to oh. realize that she's quite sincere and his actual- His eyes are glowing. Huh, how about that? Most of my bad guys turn out to be fish or something. At least- At least the bar is low. Oh, because fish is a low bar. Okay, that's the joke there. Actually already worked her way up to having a real human body, which is something that oh. almost none of his enemies have had. But it does remind him of one important question. How can he make sure the fire never comes back? She tells him all he has to do is fan the mountain 49 times, and after he gets through that last bit of tedium, he returns her fan, because he is a- I'm sorry, I just- the wet monkey! Honestly, her clothes don't look any different. Him? <laughs> the hair all watered down and soaked and the tail's dripping. <laughs> He actually looks more human this way than before, which is the weird part. Monkey of Good luck, sis. Princess Iron Fan leaves to begin a life of moderation and self-cultivation, and apparently eventually succeeds, which is really cool. Oh, the mountain of wow. flames extinguished and the way forward clear at last. And he exploits Sun's trust in me. Genius. I'd never see that coming. To be fair, no one else did either. Having trust in Pigsy. Things you don't expect. Oh, that considered... That went very well. Any day you don't get kidnapped is a win for me. You know, no, no, there's still time. He can still get kidnapped. Last, our heroes can finally continue their journey to the west. The Monkey King's destined battle with one he once called brother has been concluded. Uh, Could this be the end of their trials and tribulations? Or will there be more battles yet to face before they set foot in the Thunderclap Monastery? Find out next time on Journey to the West. God. And that was absolutely hilarious. Everything about this was fun. And I'm just glad we got more of it. Mostly because Red's faces are really damn cool. Whenever she does like the shame, the annoyed, the art. I, I, I love her art style. The fact that it's also a really good story. It's just icing on the cake at this point. A little surprised that nobody died. No, I mean, seriously. I mean, maybe the current girlfriend died. I don't actually know what happened to her. I was just paying attention to the awesome shape-shifting battle. Obviously. That was just so funny. Oh, man. I love this. I, I'm i actually tempted to go and get a copy, or maybe just listen to a copy, of Journey to the West, the original, probably English translation, and see what it's like to do that versus Red Stories. And frankly, if it wasn't going to be a spoiler for what Red's covering, I would do that. And I just realized an animation thousands of years, or hundreds of years, I forgot when this came out later, is now making me think the original is a spoiler. I'm weird, but I think we already knew that. More importantly, if you haven't already, there's a link below to the original video. Hit it up, but I just realized I still have the earphones on. How did I forget that? Yeah, again, I'm weird. I'm aware of this. Seriously, this was really good. And, and now I have to wait another year for the next part.